The chart that both you and I are observing right here represents probably one of the easiest, simplest dietary interventions that can yield. Now, in this case, the researchers alluded to a causative relationship where I'm going to probably be a little more cautious and say strong correlation, albeit I don't want to have publisher bias. Adding, adding, back to the causative, five extra years to an individual's life. And on top of that, healthy years. So if in individuals are interested in life extension, per se, this is the simplest of interventions in order to achieve that outcome. And what we're looking at is the omega-3 index. Now, another caveat. We're focusing on the omega-3 index because the researchers alluded to heritability. Some people may need to take a little bit more to get a higher omega-3 index. Some people will probably get to take away with taking a little less. But the number, the ideal number, is obviously, as we go through the studies, approximately 8%. And these are the fatty acids measured in erythrocytes. And we'll get that in a second as well. But look at the graph. Now, obviously, we're automatically going to be looking at, at that top thing, the top line, uh, which yields the highest increase in life expectancy. Now, look at the age range. We're starting at age 65. And so, but also too, check this out. A person that has a high omega-3 index and is a smoker, life expectancy is pretty much correlated, I'm just saying correlation, with being just as long as an individual who's not a smoker that has a low omega-3 index. Or I should say, possibly not the best diet. Now keep in mind too, a smoker with a bad diet, well, that does not bode too well. So to proceed as follow into the research and we'll get a little more detail uh, into the full study that give you a little bit more of uh, a substance to bite into per se. So let's begin. A higher level of omega-3 acids in the blood increases. Again, they're using causative. I tend to still, still say strong correlation, although promising. Increases life expectancy by almost five years. A 1% increase. Now keep in mind, we're not talking 1% dietary increase. We're talking a 1% increase in the omega-3 index in the blood, where the average tends to be about 5% for most individuals in, in the U.S., where in Japan, it's about 8%, but to proceed. A 1% increase in the substance of the blood is associated with a change in mortality risk similar to that of quitting smoking. Researchers have found that omega-3 levels in the blood, erythro erythrocytes, are very good mortality risk predictors. The study used data from long-term study group, the Framingham Offspring Cohort, which has been monitoring residents of this Massachusetts town in the United States since 1971. Whoop, let me move this for a second. And concludes that having, quote, having higher levels of these acids in the blood as a result of regularly including oily fish in the diet increases life expectancy by almost five years. 4.7 if you want to be particular. In the final combined model, which is three different models, including the Framingham study, smoking and having, now to keep in mind, the information that we're looking at right now, we're going into the full study. This way again, so it gives you something a little bit more tangible to bite into, to basically reflect on how it may uh, impact or how you can make changes in your particular life or lifestyle to proceed. In the final combined model bubble, we move, we move forward. Being a current smoker at age 65 years is predicted to subtract approximately 4.7 years of life compared with not smoking. A life shortening equivalent to being in the lowest compared uh, with the highest omega-3 quintile. Now keep in mind we're talking quintile, not quartile. Quintile, for those familiar with box plots, is five. Not quartile, four, which we're normally familiar with. In the current cohort, the omega-3 index cutoff for quintile one was less than 4.2%, and it was greater than 6.8% for quintile five. So the difference between the lowest intake and the highest intake. You see what I mean by that 1% change, which they alluded to in the very beginning of the article? So there's not a huge uh, gap between the two, but for every 1%, Wow, it makes a tremendous difference in improving the quality and length of an individual's life. It is interesting to note that in Japan, where the mean average omega-3 index 
is greater than 8%. Life expectancy is approximately five years longer than it is in the United States, where the mean, average, omega-3 is approximately 5%. Hence, in practice, dietary choices that change the omega-3 index may prolong life. There is a correlative study as opposed to saying correlative uh, statement as opposed to causative. Now, a little further into the study, to give you a, a possible idea of where we stand here in the U.S. The mean average omega-3 in this cohort was about 5.8%, similar to 5.2% measured in U.S. family physicians, where 78% reported using an omega-3 supplement, a little less or equal to once a week. And 57% reported consuming about less than two servings a week of fish. Not a lot. Among U.S. adults age greater or equal to 19, the average daily amount of EPA DHA consumed from food and dietary supplements, talking the U.S., it's 113 milligrams. Not a tremendous amount. And still, amazingly, uh, the omega-3 index in the blood is about 5.2%. But to proceed, the omega-3 index is primarily determined by the direct intake of two fatty acids. In this Framingham cohort, the dietary factors and heritability, which we discussed, have been reported to explain 40% and 24% of the variation in percentages, respectively, but heritability can be as high as 70%. That's why I didn't want to get too much into... Uh, the venue or basically the ballpark of trying to figure out the omega-3 fatty acid intake or recommendation of the omega-3 fatty acid intake for an individual. We're going to look at one of the older studies from 2004 to at least give you a benchmark which to work with. But once again, omega-3 index tests are fairly simple, inexpensive, and are readily available for any individual to test on their own. And if you get towards that 8% number, like the, for example, in Japan, you're golden. But to proceed, let's look at that study again from uh, uh, 2004. Here we go. The omega-3 index, a new risk factor for death in, from coronary heart disease. Now, amazingly, 2004 is 2021. So you're looking at, just to give you an idea how long it takes great information to basically uh, surface in the scientific community till it becomes a common recommendation. 2004, 2021, you get the idea. In a randomized secondary prevention trial, fish or fish oil have been demonstrated to reduce total and, and basically coronary heart disease mortality at intakes of about one gram a day. There's your benchmark. But to proceed, the omega-3 index was inversely associated with uh, basically coronary heart disease mortality. An omega-3 index of greater than or equal to 8%, Remember we looked at the chip, uh, they mentioned to, to the, uh, the average omega-3 index in Japan being about that level. Again, to be confirmed, going way back to 2004. So that's interesting. Uh, with the greatest cardio protection, whereas an index of less than or about equal to 4% was associated with the least, which is interesting because, again, it mirrors the same information from the Birmingham study here as it does from this particular study here from 2004 to 2021. Interesting how things don't necessarily change a lot over the course of, a, of close to a couple of decades. Now, to conclude, these results may contribute to the personalization, i.e. omega-3 index test, simple, easy, cheap, of dietary recommendations for food intake based on the blood concentrations of the different types of fatty acids. Quoting, what we have found is not, to reiterate, not insignificant, it reinforces the idea that small changes in diet in the right direction can have a much more powerful effect than we think and is never too late. Again, remember the study we're looking at? They were just gauging the years between 65 and older. And it's never too late or too early to make these changes. So the takeaway from the outcome, the strong correlation is the easiest of all dietary interventions, we're not talking exercise, behavioral changes, or anything. Simply, what we're talking about is having a nice omega-3 index 
In this case, between six to eight percent can yield you tremendous lifelong benefit. Again, gratitude to the researchers. Wonderful once again. I am humbled for you watching and look forward to see you all once again next week. All links will be there on YouTube. Catch you in a bit. Bye.